In this quick video, I will look into different ways to cross validate your data. Hello, my name is Rohan Paul and very welcome to my computer vision and deep learning YouTube channel. Let's get started. So a common reason why some participants in Kaggle competition outperform others is the utilization of a rock solid cross validation strategy. And there are quite a few of them. That is, there are so many different ways to cross validate your a training data set and here in this video i will only look into few of them the most common one so the first one is this uh, simple k fold so sklearn.modelselection.kfold so the k fold uh, the function that we see here sklearn.modelselection.kfold this is the most basic way to do k fold cross validation and if you're not already familiar with it uh, the k fold splits the data set into specified number of folds and that fold is uh, is captured by this argument n splits which takes a default value of 5 and after that one fold is used for validation and the remaining fold are used for training the model is then trained k times and on each iteration the validation fold is is shifted into the next fold this way the model is trained on every possible part of the data set as validation and the remaining parts as training and uh, to implement these uh, you have to pass uh, uh, these in splits which is uh, which is a uh, absolutely necessary uh, argument and other two uh, optional argument are shuffle and random state uh, these shuffle and random state you will see pretty much in all k fold cross validation implementation that sk learn has done uh, within it so shuffle is to that is to control whether to shuffle the data before splitting into batches note that the samples within each split would not be shuffled and then random state is when shuffle is true random state affects the ordering of the indices which controls the randomness of each fold otherwise this parameter has no effect pass an int for reproducible output across multiple functions all right and the implementation of k fold uh, also has been given in this very simple example so i have my x vector these two dimensional numpy array and my y vector is the single dimensional numpy array then you define a kf object which is uh, an instance of this k fold module you pass the number of splits um, say for example two and then you apply these uh, uh, with these lines that is uh, for train index test index in kf dot splits uh, then you define your uh, then you get your x train and x test by passing this train index and test index which has been uh, which has been generated from these uh, kf object and the next k fold technique we have is called uh, uh, stratified k fold now let's first understand why do i need that so a problem with the previous k fold that is this um, simplest implementation of k-fold the problem with this k-fold is that it is possible to in certain data sets that the training and validation folds vary greatly such that they start representing different data sets what is meant now what i mean by this is that the distribution of the folds in terms of features and labels varies too much for example a fold includes 100 instances of label x and zero instances of label y while another fold includes 100 instances of label y and zero instances of label x this will lead to a large variation in training the model and possibly overfitting and hence to solve the problem in uh, in this in this uh, cross validation object that is stratified k fold it's a variation of the k fold that returns stratified folds that is the folds are made by preserving the percentage of samples for each class so stratification allows the folds to have a similar representation or distribution of the data set while having different values which allows for more effective cross validation and now if we look into the documentation 
uh, the arguments are kind of exactly the exactly same what we had in uh, our simplest k fold method so the first uh, uh, compulsory argument is n splits that is a number of folds that you have to pass default value is 5 otherwise shuffle and random state argument we discussed already and uh, also importantly this uh, couple of points you have to note that is the implementation is designed to generate test sets such as all contain the same distribution of classes or as close as possible and it is also invariant to class label that is relabeling y equal to happy set to y equal to one zero should not change the indices generated and also preserve order dependencies in the data set ordering when shuffle equal to false all samples from class k in some test set were contiguous in y or separated in y by samples from classes other than k all right and uh, for the actual implementation the code remains almost similar to what we saw in the k fold that is you have your x you have your y then you declare your skf object which is an instance of stratified k fold and uh, then ultimately you get your train index and test index after applying the cross validation on the data set of x and y and uh, you apply these in these indices on your x to get your x train and x test and also on your y to get your y train and y test and the next one in our list of cross validation technique is group k fold so the group k fold essentially performs similar uh, uh, stratification but it does it in a different way it splits the data such that each fold holds approximately the same number of groups the groups don't overlap in the sense that the same group will not appear in different folds an example use case of this concept is that say you are trying to predict the value of investments according to certain features and you want to group the features by the investment ids so in that kind of situation you would need you would need a group k fold and in terms of the code and uh, scalarns implementation uh, looks like this one the main uh, argument is only the n splits that is a number of folds and otherwise the implementation remains uh, almost pretty much exactly the same you uh, have your x and y you define an object from group k fold then uh, you get your train index and test index by applying that object on your x and y data and also you define your you you declare actually you pass your groups and uh, from these indices obviously you get your x train x test and y train y test and the last one that i'm going to discuss here is uh, this one stratified group k fold now this stratified group k fold uses the same parameter as group k fold and it splits the data with non overlapping groups where each fold has the same distribution of data points for each class now an important distinction between group k fold and stratified group k fold is that the former attempts to create balanced folds such that the number of distinct groups is approximately the same in each fold whereas stratified group k fold attempts to create folds which preserves the percentage of samples for each class as much as possible given the constraint of non-overlapping groups between splits and uh, if we read their official documentation the actual code implementation is very much same like the other uh, other k fold methods uh, it clearly says that stratified k folds iterator variant with non overlapping groups this cross validation object is a variation of stratified k fold and attempts to return stratified folds with non overlapping groups uh, and also uh, these are few things you have to uh, uh, take a note and this is exactly the same things what they are telling what we already read about in their 
uh, stratified k fold method implementation so uh, the implementation is designed to mimic so i'm reading from stratified group k fold and uh, the implementation is designed to mimic the behavior of stratified k fold as much as possible for trivial groups for example where each group contains only one sample and just like uh, the stratified k fold it is invariant to class label that is relabeling y of happy set to y equal to one zero should not change the indices generated and lastly stratify based on samples as much as possible while keeping non overlapping groups constraint that means that in some cases when there is a small number of groups containing a large number of samples the stratification will not be possible and the behavior will be close to group k folds and in terms of the code implementation is similar to other k folds only difference is that you have to pass the groups as well here so first i have my x array then y array and then i have my groups uh, i define an object cv which is a uh, uh, instance from stratified group k fold uh, and then i get my uh, train indices and test indices after applying the, the same object cv.split i pass x and y and also the groups so overall stratification seeks to ensure that each fold is representative of all strata of the data generally this is done in a supervised way for classification and aims to ensure each class is approximately equally represented across each test fold which are of course combined in a complementary way to form training folds so the intuition behind this relates to the bias of most classification algorithms because they tend to weight each instance equally which means over represented classes get too much weight and that's where stratification comes to solve the problem and hence going by the same logical thought stratification is not so important for an algorithm that weights each class equally and uh, for these uh, stratified group k fold one of the most common use case of this technique is in the space of medical image processing or deep learning projects uh, in the world of medical images say for example uh, you want to classify a disease for example alzheimer disease versus healthy images from magnetic resonance image data set now for the same subject that is uh, for the same patient you might have several scans from uh, follow-up sessions or longitudinal data and let's assume you have a total of 1000 subjects or 1000 patients and out of those 1000 only 200 of them being diagnosed with the uh, with the disease that is uh, alzheimer disease in this case so that means this is an imbalanced cloud imbalanced data set example so most subjects have one scan in this case but for some of them two three or even a uh, five six scanned images are available so when training or testing the classifier you want to make sure that images from the same subject are always in the same fold to avoid data leakage so in this case we use strat uh, we use this uh, stratified group k fold to account for the class imbalance which will be taken care of by the stratification but also with the group constraint that a subject must not appear in different folds which will be taken care of by these uh, by these uh, uh, group uh, group part of the strategy that pretty much wraps up this video and all my upcoming videos will all be on some great computer vision projects and algorithm with pytorch and tensorflow so stay tuned and if you have not subscribed yet do subscribe and if you like this video smash the like button thank you for watching